Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to bind all three types of FreeSky receiver. In this video, we'll be binding ACCST, Access, and Tandem receivers. I will be mainly focusing on EFOS, but I'll also include OpenTX because other than the location in the menu system, how you actually go about binding is exactly the same. The exception being Tandem, because you can only use those on tandem transmitters and they're all running on EFOS currently. Now I'm including this in my beginner series because a lot of beginners will not know how to bind a receiver, but also a lot of people will probably find this useful too. So let's get on with the video. What I'll do first is show you what I'm gonna be using to demo this. This should be pretty straightforward. For transmitters, I'll be using my X20S, which is running EFOS. And I'll also be showing the OpenTX parts with my X10S Express, which is running OpenTX. As far as the receivers go, this is going to be very straightforward. I have an SAR for ACCST. I have an R8 Pro for access. And for tandem, I have a new TDMX. Now, this wiring may look a little odd, but this is just because it's sol direct solder on these. So just to go over the wiring, I've, it's gonna be the same setup for all three receivers. So I have my battery, which I will plug into a switch just to make it easier to turn on and off. The power from the battery then goes into uh, a BEC, which is outputting five volts, which just has a regular servo plug on the end of it. So on these, it's pretty obvious. I'll just plug it in. With this one, I've made up a little PWM adapter, I guess you could call it. So these wires at the, the very end here are the signals and all the grounds and positives are shared. So if I plug that onto here, the power and ground will then go through this servo wire into the receiver. And this wire here is just a signal for this middle pin here. And the reason I'm doing that is so that we can check everything out with the servo. So let's get started. And first of all, we'll do ACCST. Right, so the first thing that we obviously need to do is find out where we bind things. So as I said, this is the real difference between OpenTX and EFOS. So what I'm gonna do is show you on OpenTX and EFOS at the same time. So you can see that actually, the actual binding screen is not that different. So what we're gonna do is hold down the model button and this model setup page is actually where you want to be. Now I use the rotation backwards to go to the bottom of the menu because it's closer to the bottom than the top. But what you want is this internal RF section. And this is where we bind everything in OpenTX. So you can see I'm set up using my ISRM module, which is my internal RF module, and it's set to access. If you wanted to change it to D16, which is ACCST, you just click the button. So that's it. You have on ACCST just the bind option and on access you have a register and then lower down you have the bind options. So that's OpenTX covered. In EFOS, it's slightly different. We go into the plane, well, the, the model menu, I call it the plane menu, it's a picture of a plane. Um, we click the RF system and what we need to do is open up the internal module, which again is the ISRM module of this transmitter. We wanna turn it on. And then what you'll see here is we have options for access, D16 and TD, which is tandem. So that's the main difference. This flex option that you have on this side is if you have a flex firmware for the R9 part which is the 900 megahertz system. If you're binding to R9, which I'm not gonna show in the video because it is basically exactly the same. On this transmitter, what you would do, if I turn that off, you would turn on the 900 megahertz section, but we're gonna be just binding 2.4 gigahertz in this video. With this transmitter, R9 is not built in. So instead of using uh, this module, you would turn this one off what you would then do is turn this one on and choose R9M from that list. And that will get up the um, 
the same options that you have for binding and registering. So that's the differences. So I can close OpenTX down. From now on, I'm just gonna show you with EFOS, but you can see all the options that we're gonna use is the same. So the first receiver we're gonna bind up is this S8R, which is an ACCST receiver. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna plug a servo into the aileron port so we can see it working. And then what I'm gonna do is take the power from my BEC and I'm just gonna put that in any of the other ports on this side. You see I've got my switch here, which is connected from a battery. That is just providing the power. Right, so the first thing that we need to do is get like some sort of plastic would be better, um, some sort of pin. And what you have is this FS button. So it's, it's the fail safe button, but we need to push it in um, hold it down and then switch the receiver on. And you'll see this red light, which is solid and a solid yellow light. So that's in binding mode. What we now need to do is go to our transmitter. We're gonna to go to our protocol type, which we want to change from access to ACCST D16. And we're gonna turn, well, the internal module is already turned on. The internal here is for the antenna. You can use an external antenna in the back if you want, but we don't need to worry about it. With these stabilized receivers, make sure that this second channel range is on channel 16, otherwise you won't get the stabilized functions. You can change this to eight channel, um, which gives you a little bit less latency, but for what for line of sight and RC planes, it's not really an issue at all. So what we're gonna do now is go down to the bind button and just click the button. So to explain the channel one to eight and channel nine to 16, what this is actually setting is the output pins on the receiver. So you, you can see on this receiver, they're labeled one through to eight. So if I choose one to eight, whether you have telemetry on or off, these will output channels one to eight. If I choose channel nine to 16, the, the channel that's labeled one will actually be channel nine and go through to eight being channel 16. So all that does is select the channels you're wanting to use for the PWM output. We're just gonna use channel one to eight telemetry on. That's the normal option that most people will choose 99% of the time. So we click enter. And then what we see now is the red light is flashing, which means that it's bound. If I turn the volume up, occasionally you'll hear the transmitter say binding. Bind. You do get audio feedback. I've just turned my volume down because it gets a bit annoying. So we can okay that. And then if we power cycle for receiver, you will see the RSSI at the top has gone up to 100. And if I move the aileron, you can see we're all working. We, we don't have a red light at all. We just have the green light. So that is everything is bound and working correctly. So that is ACCST done. If you find that you have problems with this, it could be that you have a mismatch of firmware. That's really the only thing that causes problems. With EFOS, we're running ACCST version 2.1. And with other transmitters, I would highly recommend using the latest uh, ACCST firmware too. I've got videos on how to update the internal module and the receivers, so I'll put links to those in the description. Yeah, if you find that this doesn't work, chances are that the firmware is wrong. Just make sure that you're on the latest on the transmitter and then update the firmware on the receiver to the latest as well. Anyway, next one is this access. So the setup for this is exactly the same as the ACCST. I've got channel one hooked up to the servo. I've just got the power plugged into another pin. It doesn't really matter. Of course, on most planes, this will go in through channel three, which is connected to your throttle and um, as part of your ESC setup. So let's get on with it. So what we need to do is change our uh, protocol to access. And this is where it gets slightly different. So what we have now is a register button. So what we're gonna do is click register. We're gonna hold down the fail safe button on the receiver and power on. 
and you will see that it says receiver connected. It's got a name in the box. So R9 Pro, it should be R8 Pro really. We can rename it. So there we go, R8 Pro, and we just click register. Once it's registered and okay, that's all good, we're mostly set up. We click on OK and then power off. The register just means that the receiver is registered with the transmitter. It's not actually bound to this model yet. Uh, but at this stage, it's so much easier because all we need to do is click bind, turn the receiver on. The name of the receiver comes up in the box and we just select it and click OK. So now we're bound, everything is working. So. The whole bind process is much easier if the, tr if the receiver is registered with the transmitter. If this is buried somewhere in the model and for some reason you find you need to rebind it, as long as it's still registered, clicking the bind button is all you need to do. It also means that we can now do over the air updates, which again, if this is buried in the model, means you can update the receiver and all you need to do is power it on when it's ready to update. So it's a really nice system but that is access done what we're going to do now is take a look at tandem okay so as i mentioned this might look a bit weird but it is all basically the same you can see the yellow wire is the signal down to this pin which is going to the servo we've got our power straight in and then this is just going to power the receiver and what we're going to do is go up to our uh, receiver type and we're going to choose TD mode. You notice that now 900 and 2.4 are in the on position. We're using internal antennas. We have a power option for the uh, 900 side. So I'm just going to leave that on 10 milliwatt for the minute. We can change the number of channels. Of course, this being access, we can have 24 channels. The same is actually true of the RA Pro. It's access, so we can go up to 24 channels. I'll leave it on 16. And now we're at the same position, we just need to register. So we're gonna click our register button. Again, we've got nothing on screen, so I'll hold down the little register button or fail safe button or bind button, whatever you wanna call it. Just hold the button down and we're gonna power on. You can see we have TDMX come up. So let's just click register. You can see we have flashing lights, registration is okay. So we'll power off and we're gonna bind. Again, we're just gonna hit that bind button, waiting for receiver, power on. TDMX has come up in our list. We'll choose that from the list, click enter. And there we go. We have our tandem receiver working. Of course, with access, which includes tandem, we can actually bind uh, three receivers of the same type. So we could have three tandem receivers all bound to this one model, which is really useful for things like redundancy. With the tandem, it's probably less likely to need redundancy, but the option is there to use it. But with 900 megahertz and 2.4 gigahertz um, access, you can also bind three receivers to the same model. So there we have it. Now we can bind all three types of FreeSky receivers to our transmitters. I hope you guys found this video useful. Coming up in the next video, we're gonna be going over installing the receiver in a new RC model. So that will help the guys brand new to this hobby who have just got this bound to get it installed in their planes so they can get flying. Thank you very much guys. See you on the next one. Fly your models like you stole them.